Alright guys, it will soon be frost on the pumpkin. Yeppers, you're at Bugs in a Jar Farm in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We are going to have our first frosty night. Didn't quite make it to October. I think it is Thursday night, September 29th, 2022. And somehow I'm uh, finding the energy for this uh, chronicle of the collapse after I, I didn't even bother doing one on that little shit show down there in Fort Myers. Good Lord Almighty. You know, I've got a brother living in Fort Myers. <laughs> Fortunately, in a two-story house, not one penny of flood insurance. Not that that would have made any difference. I guess he had uh, four feet of water through his house. His cars are gone. His furniture is gone. His appliances are gone. Good Lord, my prediction is that he and no telling how many thousands of people will be homeless for three to six months. So uh, anyone who wants to see uh, collapse in action, this needs to go look at one of the fastest growing cities in this country for the past, good Lord, I think 30 years. That Fort Myers has consistently been one of the fastest growing cities. We will see uh, what this does to Fort Myers' growth rate. My guess it won't do much. But anyway, now that we're done with that, of course, I know I've had several of you uh, just going, uh, uh, okay, dude, when are you going to do your rant about that little, uh, that little methane burp? going on in the Baltic Sea right now and and, and, I, and I'm just trying so hard not to take the bait. The, the, the playing this blame game. Who the hell blew up that pipeline? Uh, I'm gonna tell you who blew up the pipeline. Who blew up the pipeline are the same ones who built the pipeline. Okay? Humans. A human blew up the pipeline. A whale did not blow up the pipeline. A seal did not blow up that pipeline. Okay? A whale did not build the pipeline. A human Humans built the pipeline. The only reason the goddamn pipeline is there is because of humans. And it's a human or humans who blew it up. That's all that matters. All of this shit, did the Ruskies do it? Did the U.S. do it? Did, uh, I, I, I don't know, well, Sancho Pons is not human. Sancho, where were you? Uh, Sancho Panza disappeared for a few hours. That Anyway, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Well, the, the, the only thing that matters is, is all of the, you know, the, this latest potential climate catastrophe going on up there. Another climate catastrophe directly caused by humans. This uh, will not be the last one of these. I, I have to admit, uh, w with all of my ranting about the methane burp, uh, I did not think it was going to come this way. But uh, now that this cat has been out of the bag, this will not be the last time this happens. The more and more of these pipelines, oil and gas and every other kind of goddamn pipeline that humans built, uh, built, are planning to build, uh, now we can add sabotage. That humans, they don't care about the effects on the planet. The humans have gone completely out of control. 
if, if, if this is, is not a reason, one more reason to make planet Earth a human exclusion zone. We have no business on this planet. We never should have gotten onto this planet. However it happened, uh, and, and I'm beginning to go with the space alien uh, uh, theory because no native earthling would treat their planet this way. Uh, and, and, and this will happen again and again. If it doesn't happen by accident, uh, it will happen by uh, direct sabotage. Uh, for their little political, excuse me, I'm going to use an F word, their little political mind fucks out there getting all the, uh, good God, the conspiracy whack eyes on every end of the political spectrum. Uh, from Jimmy Dore on one side to Alex Jones on the other, everybody out there uh, pointing fingers and it, it, humans! That's all you need to know. Fucking humans! Excuse the uh, F-bomb. I'm sick and tired of humans. I'm sick of them. We gotta go. Anyway, we will now get back to our regularly scheduled program, and we're going to go over to... Uh, to where is it? Those little lefties over at Common Dreams, of course, uh, they're not going to sit this one out. But it, but but good for the little lefties. They're they at least uh, at least Common Dreams is not automatically pointing the finger uh, at the U.S. Uh, climate scientist demands war crimes charges for whoever ordered pipeline sabotage. I agree. Humans, we are 8 billion war criminals. We have declared war on this, every one of us, from the moment we wake up in the morning to the moment we go to bed, we declare war on this planet. I am a war criminal. You are a war criminal. If you are a human, you are a war criminal. Anyway, so let's go to that one, to this one. We're going to touch on, uh, you can draw your own dots. Uh, I guess there's counting that climate scientist talking about war criminals. Uh, I guess let's, let's look at five stories. Let's look at four more. Okay, right next to that story, <clears throat> 15 thousand miles of new oil pipelines worldwide show, quote, almost deliberate failure to meet climate goals. Almost deliberate failure to meet. This is a deliberate attack on the planet. And, and I don't even think they're talking about gas pipelines. And we're not talking about the, the one that you, we're talking about the ones on the drawing board. 15,000 miles of new oil pipelines to, uh, to accidentally break, to be sabotaged, uh, whatever. It is a declaration of war against the planet by humans, the war criminals of the planet. And take a wild guess, the number one war criminal of them all, the United States is currently developing more new oil pipeline capacity than any other country a global analysis shows. Uh, as climate scientists and frontline community, you know, Common Dreams cannot do a story about climate with, without the word frontline. They can't do it. I, I, I guess this word frontline is one of these little, new little lefty terms anyway. 
as climate scientists and frontline communities plead with governments to urgently phase out planet wrecking fossil fuels, an analysis released Tuesday shows that nearly 15 thousand miles of new oil pipelines are currently in development worldwide, potentially imperiling the hopes of curbing runaway warming. Hmm. Titled, <coughs> Crude Awakening Oil Pipelines in Development Across the Globe, the new report from Global Energy Monitor finds that the United States is currently pursuing more new oil pipeline capacity by length than any other country on Earth, with a total of around 1,700 miles of pipelines either already under construction today or proposed to crank up tomorrow. Not surprisingly, the majority of U.S. pipeline construction is linked to the Permian Basin, a massive carbon bomb. Yes, uh, this quoting the report. <clears throat> Buoyed by recent profits in 2021 and 2022, the oil industry is moving ahead with a massive expansion of the global oil pipeline system. Over 24,000 kilometers, otherwise known as about 15,000 miles, of crude oil transmission pipelines are in development about 40% of which are already under construction. Despite taking a back seat to the global gas boom in recent years, and it doesn't even talk about how many miles of new gas lines being built all over the damn planet, this expansion of crude oil infrastructure creates a substantial stranded asset risk for project developers and is dramatically at odds with plans to limit <laughs> plans to limit global warming to one and a half C or two degrees C close quote oh yes uh, GEM notices that the total projected cost of the worldwide oil pipeline build-out is over $75 billion, and pipelines under development are long enough to stretch nearly two-thirds the way around Earth. Hmm. While emphasizing that, quote, Poor disclosure of pipeline capacity makes exact greenhouse gas estimates difficult. GEM concludes that oil pipelines currently being built, not the ones that are built or the ones that are being built right now, quote, would add about 8.3 million barrels per day of crude oil transmission capacity and projects, you know, on the drawing board would add an, an additional 21.8 million barrels per day. Together, these additional capacities would generate 4.6 billion tons of CO2 annually. Do you think so? But who cares, because we can just suck that CO2 right out of the air, huh? Analysis exposes taxpayer billions wasted on dead-end carbon capture schemes. Yes, Food and Water Watch said, quote, This track record should elicit serious concern. Hmm as Congress dumps billions more into failed carbon capture technology. An analysis published this week shows that past congressional efforts to 
bolster fossil fuel industry backed carbon capture schemes have amounted to little more than a sinkhole of taxpayer money. A pertinent warning as Congress moves once again to pump billions of dollars into the failed technology as the climate crisis intensifies. As a cautionary tale, the report from Food and Water Watch points to the 2009 American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, a stimulus package that put forth $3.4 billion for the research and development of carbon capture and storage projects. You know, going back to 2009, the results were not exactly encouraging. I've already mentioned this in a past ramp, but uh, bears repeating. Food and Water Watch notes that out of 11 large-scale demonstration projects selected by the Department of Energy, nine were funded, you know, by the 2009 uh, taxpayer giveaway, and of those, only two remain operational today. Of the five commercial power plant projects, the analysis shows only one ever reached operation, and it faced serious challenges, forcing that plant to close after fewer than four years. Yep, 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 and here we go again. Here we go again. Can you uh, say, let's dump another $2 billion down this toilet? The Bipartisan Infrastructure Act, a law crafted in part by Big Oil, also greenlights $2.1 billion in loans and grants for new CCS infrastructure, which fossil fuel companies have embraced in what environmentalists say is a cynical ploy to stave off effective climate action. Food and Water Watch declared, quote, what the fossil fuel industry hopes you will not find out is that carbon capture is already a failure of an experiment funded with taxpayer money. Do you think so? Uh, Food and Water Watch has repeatedly expressed concerns about the Inflation Reduction Act support for carbon capture given its history of failure. In some cases, major carbon capture efforts in the U.S. have actually produced a net increase in carbon emissions. Uh, oh, that's right. That, that, now I remember it was this uh, analysis in August. Uh, estimates of the new law's emission slashing potential rest on, quote, highly dubious predictions about the effectiveness of carbon capture and the notion that the industry would see massive growth in just a matter of months. Uh, there you go. Uh, that goes on. So let's see. We got two more. How far do you have to go to connect the dots between those stories and this story? Acidification of Arctic happening up to four times faster than other oceans. Yes, new research followed reports that the Arctic overall is warming nearly four times faster than the Earth as a whole. So, wow, who should be surprised that the Arctic Ocean is acidifying four times faster than other oceans? 
Researchers in China and the U.S. said Thursday, today, they were, quote, shocked, shocked to discover that the Arctic Ocean is acidifying three to four times faster than the rest of the world's oceans. Huh. The faster rate of change is due to the speed with which ice in the ocean is melting, uh, according to this uh, new research. The research analyzed data collected on 47 expeditions to the Arctic between 1994 and 2020 and found pH levels decrease roughly four times faster in the Western Arctic Ocean than in other oceans over the same time period. Uh, in 1990, only a tiny portion of the Arctic had low pH. By 2020, the area had grown to 7% of the ocean. We were shocked! Yes. Uh, the Arctic is warming nearly four times as fast as the Earth as a whole, about twice the rate that had previously been estimated for the region. In turn, Arctic waters are absorbing more of the atmosphere's carbon dioxide, leading to more acidification. Do you think so? The continued extraction of fossil fuels, not to mention the sabotaging of fossil fuel pipelines, and the resulting carbon emissions have set off a feedback loop involving melting sea ice and acidification. Uh, as Vice reported today, quote, scientists say that if sea ice continues to melt, melt at its current rate, the rapid acidification of the ocean will intensify in the next few decades until there is no sea ice left in the Arctic solution. The ultimate solution, one of the researchers told Vice, would be to remove humans from planet Earth, to reduce emissions, and also, also try to remove CO2 activity from the atmosphere. Yeah, we did. We learned about how, how, how well that was going. Obviously, uh, I was joking that anybody is suggesting that the ultimate solution would be to remove humans from the planet. They're claiming the ultimate solution would be to remove fossil fuels from the atmosphere. There is one way to do that. That is to remove humans from the planet. Until we do remove humans from the planet, the planet is doomed. All right, let's just look at one more, and again, uh, you can draw your own dots. Environmental Defender killed every two days over last decade. Report finds. This is Global Witness. Quote, all over the world, indigenous peoples and environmental defenders risk their lives for the fight against climate change and biodiversity loss. The advocacy group Global Witness on Thursday marked 10 years of collecting data on slain environmental defenders by publishing a new report revealing that at least 1,733 people have been killed over the past decade, a rate of one murder every two days. The report, entitled Decades of Defiance, 10 Years of Reporting Land and Environmental Activism Worldwide, underscores how land inequality and efforts by governments, corporations, and wealthy individuals to own and control land drives deadly violence against activists. Quote, all over 
the world. Indigenous peoples and environmental defenders risk their lives for the fight against climate change and biodiversity loss, Global Witness CEO Mike Davis said. Activists and communities play a crucial role, yes, as a first line of defense against ecological collapse. Uh huh. Yes, as the climate emergency worsens, so does the killing, violence, and other repression that come with the capitalistic pursuit of land and the natural resources above and below the soil. Yep, quote, driven by the rising demand for food, fuel, and commodities, the last decade has seen an upsurge in land grabs for industries like mining, logging, agribusiness, and infrastructure projects with local communities rarely consulted or compensated. Anyway, good for those little lefties over there at Common Dreams. <sighs> Just a little dog. Anyway, uh, your old uh, doomsday real estate investor needs to wrap this up because I need to get down to uh, south to Lee County, Florida, one of the the fastest growing counties in the United States uh, over the last 30 years because I understand there are some unbelievable real estate deals in Lee County, Florida, and I need to get out there and make some real estate deals uh, of the collapse of a planet while I still can. I highly suggest you get down to Southwest Florida and make some real estate deals while you still can. Nice little dog. Bye guys.